Praise the Lord. Blessed are those who fear the Lord, who find great delight in his commands. Their children will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in their houses, and their righteousness endures forever. Even in darkness, light dawns for the upright. For those who are gracious and compassionate and righteous, good will come to those who are generous and lend freely, who conduct their affairs with justice. Surely the righteous will never be shaken. They will remember for, be remembered forever. There will have no fear of bad news. Their hearts are steadfast trusting in the Lord. Their hearts are secure. Their will have no fear. In the end they will look in triumph on their foes. They have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Their horn will be lifted high in honor. The wicked will see and be vexed. They will gnash their teeth and waste away. The longings of the wicked will come to nothing. And that is uh, Psalm 112. <laughs> I'm going to say this um, quite th this way. This is the truest description of what faith should actually mean to us. How we should act because we are full of God's faith, God's grace. And how our lives will look. Because we're filled with love, we're filled with gratitude, and that is the truest of riches to be in our homes. Because we know that God, no matter what, will provide for us and will deliver us to abundance and bounty. So we have a recording from um, Richard Hom. And she's going to describe her journey of faith and what faith means to her. So let's listen. Tell us why faith is important to you and, and what it means to you and how it guides you. Okay. So the, the, when you asked me the question, um, why is faith important to me? Uh, I came up with three, three answers, really. Um, and it was interesting because the first answer was faith directs my thoughts, words, actions, and emotions today. Because I've incorporated faith to be the foundation of my life. It's not just a belief system that dictates a part of who I am. It dictates my entire being, and then it dictates my entire reality. Uh, but that wasn't always the case. And the truth is that I once experienced a life without faith. And what that looked like for me was a life of addiction, a life of, you know, moments of despair, of depression, of, of feeling trapped in many ways, um, mostly trapped inside my own head a lot of the times. But, um, you know, degrees of selfishness that that the most people do struggle with but don't talk about um, because you know ultimately when people are self-obsessed and self-absorbed it's a miserable place to be in and and we don't talk about that enough um and so and and not knowing having a direction not having a direction um you know floundering around in life trying to figure the next right thing out and it's just almost impossible to do that for me without faith and so during that time frame for me, when I was just, you know, trying to figure things out, I would vacillate between, 
you know, uh, the foxhole prayers, right? <laughs> I was like, okay, now I believe in God when, when I'm in trouble, that God in the box mentality. <laughs> yeah. or, and, then, and then I would go on and live my life the way I wanted to live it when I wasn't in pain, when I wasn't in anxiety, when I wasn't struggling with, you know, a horrible mindset um, or just things were going bad in my life. You know, relationships were going south. Everything was going bad. But when everything was going good, I felt like I could take the reins of my life again. So my faith life was dictated by circumstances, environments, and situations versus any internal anchor uh, to God. And, you know, I had to... I had to ask myself, and this actually was a time in college um, where I was in a course, and it was what was it called? Um, it was it was ethics or religious beliefs or something along those lines. And I remember reading Blaise Pascal's *The Wager*, right? <laughs> and you wait, and what it is, you know, it's literally if you were to wager that there was a heaven or a hell, if you were to wager that God was real or He wasn't, you're you're more likely to just wager that he is real and that heaven is real rather than the latter. It, it will just serve you more in everything, personal growth, in uh, connecting to yourself, connecting to others. And so um, once I started to adopt a life of faith and self-awareness and realizing that I was always holding on to these God-sized problems and trying to handle them with my human perspective um, I realized that it was like, you know, constantly hitting my head against the wall. And that's miserable, right? I don't know about you, but that's miserable. <laughs> so I started to, you know, shift my perspective from, you know, being a human being, having a spiritual experience where, you know, it was that God in the box mentality, uh, where, you know, I'd call on God when I needed him, and then he just didn't exist when I wanted to live my life the way I wanted to, um, to being a spiritual being, having a human experience, which means that everything started to function in God's economy. And it always did. I just started to believe that, you know, the truth is about objective truth doesn't objective truth doesn't exist when I believe in it. It exists without my belief. And once I started to ask, you know, very simply ask God, God, I don't believe, help my unbelief, like in Mark chapter 9, I think it's verse 12, help my unbelief, and started to pray, like, real and raw and authentically and saying, like, I don't believe, give me some belief, I don't want to pray, give me a desire to pray, I don't want to serve you, give me a desire to serve you, I don't want to trust you, and I don't trust you, help me to trust you, <clears throat> Once I was able to get to that place of finding my finding God, I found myself, you know, and my true intentions, my true thoughts, my true desires. And uh, it was pretty it was pretty incredible when I got there. And so once everything functions in God's economy, I mean, it's such a it's that's where I found my romance with life. Um, you know, I was doing uh, teaching at something called Recovery Church Movement um, this past week. And when I said something about there are three bubbles in this world, in this culture right now, that people believe that there are. And let me explain. So people believe that they have their own bubble. And it doesn't touch the God bubble. It doesn't touch, um, you know, the evil bubble. There's the good, there's an evil, and then there's the you bubble, right? And so the you bubble is your will. And the God bubble doesn't touch your will, and neither does the evil bubble, unless you engage with them. So mm -hmm. the truth is that's not the case. <laughs> the, the, the truth is that those bubbles are all connected, and the proper use of my will is to choose either God or Satan or his plan of action for my life. There is no, it's an imaginary bubble of cultural relativism. When I believe that I can just put God over here in a box, evil in a box, and now I can just live my life. And that's the biggest problem of our culture today, is we think that we have these own, our own bubbles, but we absolutely don't. That's the lie that we all believe, right? And so I, I'm constantly, you know, helping others to empower them to seek the truth. The number one prayer I would say to anyone who has no faith whatsoever is to just simply put out there into say it out loud and say 
I don't believe help my unbelief. If you're real, step into my life and make yourself known. Very simple. Convict me about the fullness of truth. And that's, that's honestly the prayer that I give to anyone who's seeking out the truth. I, I'm always encouraging them to find that because I absolutely believe beyond a shadow of a, go- a doubt that God will lead you to the fullness of truth and will lead you to that relationship that will give you that romance with life. Well, thank you, Bridget. Um, and let us pray. God, give us that proof, that, that reason to believe. Hand it to us every day. Bring us to that blessed place that you talk, that David talks about in the Psalms. Let our faith bring us to being upright so that we always see the light of dawn. Help us to realize through faith, through your your grace, that we should help those who are in need. That we should lift others as we climb to the tops of the mountains to Shout your name, shout your glory, and proclaim our faith in you. Amen. Tell us why faith.